Hello, hello, hello. We are Cold Brew Money and we talk about money because your friends and family won't. This year, we are investing $12,000 in the CBM portfolio. We will be analyzing companies as part of the CBM portfolio from a value play perspective. What does value play mean? We'll be looking at all the businesses for using Warren Buffet's four pillars. What are they? The first one being, does the business have meaning to you? Second, is the business with a strong competitive advantage or a moat? Third, is the management honest and running the business as their own? And the fourth one, are we getting a discount currently? So we finally found a business that we want to invest our first thousand dollars into. And that is, let us, let us show it to you. Yes, we are investing our first thousand dollars in Facebook or now it is called Meta. In today's episode, we will be walking you through why do we think Meta is a good value, good business from a value play perspective and why did we invest a thousand dollars in this business? We'll be also talking about our investing thesis and also what exactly is Metaverse and we will be literally walking you through the whole process as we talk about it. So let's get started. So let's get started. Uh, since we are talking about Meta, we thought we'll do it in the Metaverse, right? We're using Spatial.io, which is one of the Meta companies uh, where you can create a basically roam around in this virtual world that you built. You could collaborate here like we are doing it right, right now. You could see, uh, hang out with your friends and you can uh, do all sorts of uh, fun stuff inside of this metaverse. So this is just one, one uh, idea of the metaverse, but Facebook does a lot more than that, right? So um, let's, get, let's see what Facebook has been doing for the last, I don't know, 15 years since its existence. Um, as you can see in 20, 2004, Facebook came out. Uh, with Facebook, right? The Facebook, and there's been like tons of, you know, like everybody knows the story and a great movie was also made on that. And in 2011, uh, looks like they, they released like the Facebook Messenger as a separate app. Uh, did we, I think I remember like, we used to send each other like YouTube videos on Facebook. Like if I uh, look at my uh, our chat on Facebook, uh, it's filled with all sorts of interesting videos that uh, creators used to make. This is back in like 2011, 12, right? When we were in undergrad. Yeah. Um, I, I remember when Facebook went IPO, uh, I was actually like looking at the screen. Like uh, I, I wanted to buy, of course, I had no idea how to buy Facebook at the time. I, I remember it, uh, it started trading at like 38 and we went to 45 and then it closed at like uh, a little less than uh, 38. Uh, but that was, uh, that was like one of the first IPOs probably that I was uh, following initially, right? Like from the beginning. Anyway, as you can see in the last 15 years, they've, they have like a portfolio of products uh, like Facebook, Messenger, uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, Oculus, Workplace, uh, Portal, Novi. Uh, and we will talk about like what these platform, different platforms uh, do and how it is contributing to the overall goal that uh, meta has and I, i'm still not getting gotten used to calling facebook meta yeah me neither i can't right let's start with the the top line growth now that we know about the products it's I, and i'm pretty sure like whoever's listening to this is probably uh, has interacted with the facebook products right like we, we listed all the products that they have um and we uh, whatsapp is like i think most popular among like our audience, I'm pretty sure uh, they interact with at least one Facebook product a day. Um, but most of their revenue, the top line comes from advertising. As you can see, it's like more than 90% or something. Facebook truly is like a global company. You can see 45% comes from like Northern America, US and Canada. 23% of the revenue comes from Europe. 23 comes from Asia uh, Pacific and uh, 8.5 from other rest of the world. So it's, it has even like, uh, although major chunk comes from North America, a lot of uh, the revenue, like more than half of the revenue comes from the rest of the world. So it's truly a global company because they have like what, uh, some 2 billion users using their product every single day, right? You can Which see is that daily. still mind blowing. I still can't get over the fact that like every day there are 2 billion people using one of the Facebook products, right? 
and you can see the sheer size of Facebook. Uh, compare that with its peers, uh, Snapchat and Twitter. Uh, Snapchat is like 300 uh, million daily active users. Uh, Twitter is even less than that. Um, and Facebook is like 10 times, eight to 10 times of uh, what, what their total user base is. So it's pretty astonishing. No wonder their revenue is coming from all over the world. Um, and they are pretty efficient also, right? They are able to generate about $10 for every user that spends, uh, like spends time on there, interacts with their platform. So uh, average revenue generated per user is $10. Let's, let's now talk about like the, the growth of Facebook, right? Where is the future growth going to come from? I mean, all of this, what we discussed so far, it's obvious uh, they have huge scale. They've, they've built a portfolio of products that everyone uses every day. But what about the future? right? The, the market has rewarded them with a 900 billion to a trillion dollar market cap, right? A social media company is worth a trillion dollar, which I think is a misnomer. It's more of an advertising company, which is worth a billion dollar. Uh, but the future growth is going to come from, of course, the metaverse, uh, building technologies, software as experiences, building another platform, right? Um, which, which the users, the next generation of platforms, like the first generation, right? Like us, when initial Facebook started, we experienced the social connectivity on a 2D screen, on a web browser, almost on a phone, right? Um, and that, that changed to with a little more interaction. It was mostly what, like text-based, you would post, uh, then there was photo, then there was video. Now there is constant like chat feature, uh, there's uh, like links that you can share. There's also like a live audio that Facebook has has been investing in. Uh, but now they are building like the next generation, which is interacting through all the 3D uh, inside the 3D world, be becoming a part of the game, right? Um, and so that's that's definitely the big one. In order to access the metaverse, you need uh, some sort of a device like the Oculus uh, VR headset, right? So that's that's their hardware department. Um, Facebook bought Oculus like I think five six years ago, to twenty fourteen or fifteen. Yep. Um, and have been like constantly reinvesting in it. Um, and you could see like during the holiday season, Oculus was the most gifted uh, product, um, and it was the most downloaded uh, app in the app store, which is pretty insane. They also have. Um, a, Payment uh, payments platform that they've been developing uh, called Novi, which enables you to send money like overseas through like WhatsApp, right? Just like you're sending hi, you you can send like five dollars, right? Which is also pretty neat. I think they they they're doing a lot more uh, groundwork for setting this up so that you know e there's ease of payment transfer. Yep, and I think there are talks about integrating it with WhatsApp as well, right? Uh, the most excited I am about is Reels, uh, and we have listed that as well. Uh, I think Mark Zuckerberg recently in one of the interviews said that uh, the next growth is going to be coming from video content. And if you are on Instagram, if you're active on Instagram, I don't know a single person currently who is not addicted to Reels. Everyone is just constantly scrolling through their Reel page. So that's going to be the next big growth opportunity for uh, Facebook as well on that front. Yeah, no wonder. I mean, look at this, right? The second most downloaded app was TikTok, TikTok. and yeah. Facebook basically ripped that off to stories, yeah. uh, uh, for, <laughs> to Reels, sorry. And and if <laughs> and this is, I'm just no noticing this now. They also ripped off a uh, number four app on the on the yes on the list so yes yeah i think they, they end uh, the 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 thing is like people this is this is a powerful thing about network effects right even if, if it is not a, like a innovative it doesn't have to be innovative the power actually comes from network effects if everyone is using that people will come to that like they're not yes doing... cool so now that we know like what facebook um has uh, has been doing where it gets most of its uh, revenue from um where what are its expenses and where the growth is going to come from let's just put all together into like a on a mind map uh, so that we have everything in one place and then we can jump into the checklist and start filling uh, things out so for let's look at like the business ads hardware products payments right they have they most of the ads comes from all the social media apps that they have uh, hardware product products that 
it comes from oculus and portal um, and payments uh, is more of a future growth uh, so they've started uh, rolling out uh, whatsapp payments in certain areas so let's talk about the management it is founder ceo uh, it has great uh, free cash flow uh, very high uh, return on invested capital the management has done great jobs about investing in the technologies uh, in the right kind of technologies and have been able to re return like great amount of uh, money to the shareholders um, and they've been constantly doing uh, share buybacks. So I think the management is pretty good. Uh, let's look at the growth. We just spoke about that. Metaverse, payment platforms, and Instagram uh, is going to be the key uh, places where the growth is going to come from. Um, and Metaverse is probably the most of the unknown. Like that's the biggest risk and the biggest reward that they'll probably get. They, it, it has some sort of an optionality in terms of like hardware sales. They might have like, they have they have inbuilt um, team which generates VR games, metaverse games, and meta metaverse experiences. So one of if one of them you know is a breakout hit, they might be able to monetize that very very well. Um, and then obviously there's all Web three implications with NFTs and whatnot, right? Yeah. And Mark Zuckerberg and like the latest release when they changed the name to Meta, they he pledged about ten billion dollars and developing the metaverse right so that's a big amount of money that is being put into research and development i mean for the numbers i haven't seen very few companies have been able to you know compete with this kind of numbers like the the top line growth has consistently been growing north of 25 percent operating margin is, has always been between 30 to 40 percent even like after the cambridge analytica scandal and like they had to put in like hire a lot of people and everything it is still like the the it, there was a dip in the operating margin but nothing nothing crazy um and the earnings have also been growing at like 25 more than 25 percent so um amazing numbers uh balance sheet uh looks very very strong um but there are risks associated with Facebook, right? Um, the biggest one is the regulation. Facebook is always in the news for something going. There is always a legal case going around, like with Facebook, and which everyone must have observed. So in terms of regulation, there are there is always something happening with uh, the business and for which it has always been punished in the news and on the media but as you as atita has mentioned like the business has been going strong another big risk that i see is like the failure to launch the metaverse right they're betting big on it although 10 billion dollars in a grand scheme of things for facebook is not a lot uh, but i think uh, you know it it'll tarnish the name uh, the brand name and also there will be questions about the leadership if they're not able to uh, launch the metaverse so i think if if metaverse doesn't work out Facebook financially will be fine because they're, you know, they're the cash cow is still very healthy, but uh, there will be questions uh, on, on like, you know, leadership and uh, the growth, where is it going to come from? And um, just the brand name. There, there are also like competing products that will eat over uh, eat on their market share, like TikTok, Snapchat, um, and like uh, other uh, Oculus is probably like the most used VR headset, but there there are like uh, more more and more startups and companies investing. Apple, for instance, is going to come out is rumored to come out with a VR AR headset, right? So that's they they'll have to compete with them on the hardware hardware space. So those are some of the risks, um, and this gives like a holistic picture of where like Meta is. At least that's what we've come up with. If you have, uh, if you if you can think of some ideas of you think we are wrong in this on, on this mind map please feel free to let us know. Uh, but I think I'm fairly comfortable jumping into the, the checklist. What do you think, Kapan? Yep, yep, sounds good. And as you know, we've developed the checklist again based on Warren Buffet's four pillars. We, If you haven't watched the previous episode, go check out our Take-Two Interactive episode and Nextstar, which will also be linked. So we filled out the checklist for uh, Facebook and we'll just walk through step-by-step -step of the checklist. Uh, and as I said, this checklist will be available soon to be downloaded from our website. So you can fill it out yourself in the future. Cool. The step one, do you understand the business or as Warren Buffet says, is the business part of your circle of competence? So the first question in that, did you check the products and services sold by the company? Have you seen them or known them before? Can you write down two, through two, two to three lines on each product and services? 
So we've answered yes for this one um, and given a score of five because we, which is automatically generated because we understand Facebook. Uh, we walk through all of the products and we will be able to write two to three lines. Uh, the second one, what is required to make these products and services? Have you seen them or known before? Can you explain two to three requirements? Uh, Facebook is in the advertisement business and it's a tech company. Atita and I, we both understand technology companies having done our undergrad in the same field. So we understand how the tech businesses work and also have an overview of how advertisement businesses work. So we've answered yes for this one as well. Third one, are you comfortable to own the business for next 10 years? We've answered yes. And to be honest, I had bought Facebook back in 2016 when I had first started investing. So if I hadn't have to leave the US, I would have, I would have be still holding on to it. But Atit, you also have some investments in Facebook, right? Like on your personal yeah. Level. Yeah, it's like probably my second biggest uh, yep. like holding. Um, yeah. And it has grown quite a bit, right? That's why it has become like the second biggest holding. Um, and yeah, it's been six years since I've been holding it. I, and I have no plans of selling it anytime soon. And I, I didn't sell during the Cambridge Analytica scandal um, yeah. or whenever it was facing some congressional uh, issue. So, yep, I am willing to hold it for another 10 years also. Cool. Moving on to the next part of the checklist, which is, does the business have a long-term competitive advantage? Warren Buffet calls this as a moat. Do you think the business can fare well against its competition? So there are like six questions here. We'll go through each one of them real quickly. The first one, brand moat. Are you willing to pay more for the brand? You answered okay moat for this one. Facebook as a brand, we know it. Everyone knows about it. But are you willing to pay more for the brand? Facebook is in the advertisement business and in that way, it's like an okay mode. It's not a strong or a great mode. Atit, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, in the Facebook, uh, people have reservations about it, right? Because of all the scandals. Uh, yeah. That's why I think that they've lost a little bit of brand cachet uh, over the last uh, few few uh, years. So that's why I, like, uh, I think it's okay mode. Yeah. And also like, and this comes up every time I discuss this with my friends about Facebook, there comes the ethicality of things as well. A lot of people are not comfortable right. owning the business. So if you're not comfortable owning the business, that's totally fine. But as we discussed, Atita and I, we are fine with it because I feel in the long term, uh, uh, Facebook has done a lot more good than the negative press that it gets. Like I personally feel it has brought me closer to a lot of friends, which if it did not exist, I wouldn't be even talking to. Yeah, absolutely. If I want to reach out to someone from my high school, how, I, how am I going to do that? Of course, through Facebook. I don't yeah. have the number. Yeah, while the filling out the checklist. link is Facebook, yeah. Yeah, well, while filling out the checklist, I think uh, we made a joke, right? Like everyone has a Facebook account at this point. It's like yellow pages, right? Everyone has an account on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. The no brainer. Cool. The second one, secret mode. Do they hold a trade secret or a patent? I think they, they so, constantly file for patents in the technology space and uh, like um, with with their algorithms and predictive algorithms and marketing space. So uh, I think they have pretty great mode there. Cool. The next one, toll bridge mode. Do they have control of the market allowing them to charge customers? Again, we said great mode. Yeah, there are like a digital ad uh, ad space. There are like maybe three people, right? Like Facebook, Google, and uh, in, maybe... Nextstar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Nextstar or <laughs> I don't know. Very like uh, it's it's fragmented. Yeah. I think I think uh, Amazon do, is do, uh, gaining speed on that. Uh, but still, like I think the uh, Facebook and Google are like by far like the top two. Also, the amount yeah. of data they have already collected on their customers, uh, they have a very good advantage here, I feel. Yeah. Um, switching mode is switching difficult for users. We've said a strong uh, strong mode and the network effects comes to play here, right? Uh, yeah. The more people on the network, the stronger network effects are and more people will continue using it for a greater amount of time. Yep. Yep, I think so too. Like, it's, it's very difficult to carry your network of friends from Instagram to somewhere else, right? You have to, again, send them invitation and all that. So 
Uh, I think it's pretty, and all the memories and everything that you upload, right? All the photos, all the posts, you're basically a stream of consciousness over the last 10 years. It, they've collected a stream, stream of consciousness of so many people. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, it's good or bad. Uh, it's definitely difficult to switch. Uh, so cool. it's pretty strong there. Yeah. The next one, price mode. Again, we've said it's a great mode. Can no so one like compete? A yeah. yeah. Can no one compete with their low price? Yeah. And <laughs> like, it's not price mode only, but we discussed this before, right? In the presentation, but um, Snapchat, they were able to replicate their entire Snapchat app into their own app. So like they are, no one is able to compete in the sense that they can, they have so much cash, they can just like, replicated so it, it does not relate to a price mode but that's also one of the things that facebook has an advantage to yeah cool uh the last one mode direction narrow stable widening we've said widening and all of these things they are they, they will continue to grow in this space so yeah i think except for like probably the brand mode they really need to uh fix it up uh, and they're they're trying trying to do with like the meta right and rebranding it to like meta and look at the metaverse not on the all the uh analytics and the the data collection privacy collection that we do on on users so they they are moving in that direction they probably need to ramp up speed on that so yeah so but overall other modes it's there i think uh, is widening still cool do you want to do the mode numbers sorry sure yeah all right, let's, let's talk about the, fine. These are all like qualitative aspects, right? It's opinion. You could be wrong on it. I could be wrong on it. You know, you could have your own opinion, but the numbers are the facts, right? This is actually the fact, right? This is the truth, ground truth. So uh, the revenue growth, they've been growing for the last five years for like th more than 36%. Um, and our bar is like 15%, right? Uh, way, way above the bar. Same thing with net income growth, 51, more than 51%. Um, cash flow growth, 30%. Uh, EBIT margin is about between 30 to 40%, right? For the five years. Um, they've been, and it's not even volatile. It's pretty much consistent if you look at it, except for maybe one year of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. The margin and the growth rate is pretty, pretty stable. Um, and ROIC is uh, 23%, again, very high uh, for, for like a lot of, a lot of companies, very, very few companies would be able to replicate this numbers. So, yep, I think uh, the, whatever story that we had for the, uh, the modes, the numbers are validating that story. Cool. Moving to the next one. Step three is the business run by good, honest people with long-term mission. Uh, there are three questions to you where we validate how does the management, how is the management performing? The first question is the CEO running the business as it's only a set they will own for the next hundred years or it's a founder led business. You said, yes, Mark Zuckerberg who started the Facebook, he's still running the business and he runs it as if it's his only business that he loan for the next hundred years. Other reviews on Glassdoor for the business and CEO positive. We've said given a negative one after checking Glassdoor, yeah, I mean, uh, the, again, I think it relates to like the the uh, Mark Zuckerberg's image, um, like the you know, so not everyone agrees with what Facebook is doing, how they are, uh, because there are serious considerations about, about uh, what what are the ethical dilemmas of of you know using social media, especially for like kids. Um, so there's there's definitely a lot of. Uh, people who are not happy with uh, employees inside the company that they have had like the whistleblower events and everything uh, happen to them like last year, right? So um, that's why I think I've given like negative one. And then the last question, do they have a clear mission statement explaining their goal? Their mission statement was pretty clear. So we've given it a two out of three. Moving to the last part, are you getting a discount on the business? For this, we'll switch to the DCF calculator that we've built on our website. Uh, if you go to coldbrew.money slash TCF dash calculator, which we'll also link in the show notes, uh, under the tool section, you'll be able to find the DCF calculator. We've done an entire video on how to use this tool, which we'll put in the show notes as well, but let's get started. Let's find the fair price for Facebook. Atit, if you can share the numbers, 
the first one enter your investments average gps for the last 5 years below uh, 11 11 eps for the last 5 years the next step is enter your stocks expected profit growth rate percent over the next 10 years 25 25% Next, enter the minimum return that you could earn instead of pursuing the investment. 15. That's 15. because you want to, that's, that's the rule one investing, fill down investing number. Yep. And you we've also explained all your money. Yeah. Yep. And we've also explained the fill down part in one of the videos. And also while explaining CBM portfolio, our goal is to hit a minimum of 12.5%. But if it is a more risky kind of an investment, we look for a 15% just to have that margin of safety in our decision. And the last step question, enter the expected PE ratio for your stock 10 years from now. Yeah, so average uh, market tends to be around 20. Uh, I think Facebook, even after 10 years, if uh, the, you know, th they don't really have to execute 100% on metaverse. I think what they're doing, they continue to, they continue on doing that. Um, I think it'll still trade above the market. So that's why I, I selected like 22. If the 20 is the market, I just give 10% extra, uh, you know, points to Facebook for being the market leader, innovator, uh, and everything. So 22. Cool. And then the moment of truth, what's the fair value for Facebook? So per the DCF calculator, the fair value of Facebook should be 617. And 70% chance that the fair value is in the range of 491 to 742 based on the calculation. Adil, let me ask you a question. Do you really think Facebook will grow at a rate of 25% in the next, yeah. like for the next 10 years? Right. So 25% uh, might be a little too high. That means they're doubling their revenue, uh, their profit every three years, uh, which is, um, you know, like, difficult for the size at which Facebook is. I think if they do deliver, uh, you know, the metaverse, uh, there are chances of having more product lines and increasing revenue streams, but right. okay, fine. Let's be more conservative. Uh, I think they have to execute hundred percent to, in order to grow at 25%, but we can bring it down to maybe like, uh, let's say 20%. Um, yeah. I think 20% is reasonable for like the quality that, uh, Facebook demands yep so just being more conservative we think the growth rate will be 20 so i'm just changing that on the calculator based on that the fair value of facebook and, should be and yeah yeah on, on that it's like 447 but let's also take a little more conservative approach right let's say it'll trade according to the market value so not even above market so let's not do 22 let's just do 20 let's bring that down also Cool. I've reduced the P multiple to 20 and based on that, the fair value of Facebook should be 416 with a 70% chance that the fair value is in the range of 343 to 490. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. And right now Facebook uh, is trading at uh, E18, right? So with the most conservative of the calculation, uh, we are getting a lower end of 343, right? And when we uh, say like lower end of 343, it has already baked into the assumption, like the lowest of EPS, lowest of discount rate, lowest of growth rate and lowest of P multiple in the simulation that we run, right? Uh, even then it is coming undervalued. Um, and the fair value, if it, if it just executes, continues executing at the pace that it is, it is at least worth like a 420, uh, not a stock. So, and right now it is only trading at three three twenty. So it, it's definitely undervalued according to our assumptions that we've put in. What do you think? Do you think uh, they might be able to grow their profit at twenty percent? Yeah, I think it is possible for Facebook to grow at twenty percent for the next ten years. Yeah. Cool. Moving back to the checklist to show the final verdict or the summary of all the inputs that we've made till now as you can see as Atit said Facebook currently stock prices are 318 uh we've answered the circle of competence question the minimum required was 10 but we got 15 score there for moat the minimum was six we got 13 out of that for the moat numbers the minimum required was four we got five on five management minimum was three we got five there as well the total of 38 which 
the checklist says it's a buy based on the fundamental or the story part of it and then the valuation part of it uh the fair value per our most conservative assumption is still at 344 and we took an average of the conservative high and regular which comes to 421 the facebook uh, business it's being sold at 318 right now so the verdict there is also a buy all of these conditions uh we bought the business we bought uh, $1000 worth of facebook at 321 and right now it's 318 uh um, so we are down like $9 cool so we are out of the metaverse but uh that was our analysis or thesis behind facebook or meta and why do we think it's a good value come growth play as well uh if everything works out we made our most conservative assumption and still came as a buy so we finally invested our first $1000 in the business if you agree or disagree with our uh analysis let us know in the comment section below or if there is any other company that you would like us to look at please let us know it helps us a lot to find new businesses if you like cold brew money please share it with your friends and family uh, to help us grow a lot more and we are trying to get to 1000 subscribers by the end of this year on youtube so please help us reach that goal but for now these are your host atit antapan and this is cold brew money